replaced by ruby slippers. Where'd they go? Oh! Hello! Welcome once again to Citanium Mine. I am the Citanium of the Mine. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about No Place Like Home, which is a cozy game. It's so cozy. It's a game where you play Ellen, and Ellen has come back from Mars to, to Earth, and Earth is full of trash. That's, that's how this one runs. Um, what you basically do in this game is you clean up a bunch of trash, and then you plant a bunch of stuff, and replant trees, and try to clean the water, and deal with a bunch of robot spider things that are all over the place. And the key is to, you know, build your home, find your grandpa, and uh, hopefully help to rebuild the world. It's sort of like uh, WALL-E in reverse. You, you don't go to space, you actually come back to Earth and have to figure out how to deal with all of the trash and, and use it in order to make stuff. So... That's cool. You go to a bunch of different biomes. Uh, you go to the hills, and you go to the ice place. You go underground. There's a desert area. And you get to these places by accruing new resources and abilities throughout the game. Other things that you can make, like being able to, uh, you know, have cows and chickens and pigs and stuff that you lure to your farm with the promise of honey and such. And then you can collect milk and obviously make cheese. I mean, if you've played any kind of, like, farming sim, you know how this runs, right? I don't have to explain it to you. It's, uh, it's that. Lucky for all of you, though, there is no timer on the days. Like, the days will pass by and new days will start, and that's the passage of time. But you don't really get penalized for staying out late. In fact, you don't have a sleep meter at all unless you play on the higher survival difficulty settings. So there's really uh, no reason to just keep on playing without having to go to sleep, start a new day, and figure out what you're going to do in a time frame. You can just keep on running around. You can build entire forests and orchards. I thought what was really interesting is that you can build practically anywhere. Like, as you access new areas, if you wanted to set down a farm plot there, if you wanted to grow a bunch of trees in that area, go for it. Enjoy. You can set up individual areas all across the map in every single map. You don't have to just stay on your one farm area. The graphics are not the greatest, but they are serviceable. You don't feel like it's ugly. But then again, reminder, the majority of what you're looking at is giant piles of trash when you get there. So anything's going to look better than that once you start setting up shop. There are different kinds of trash piles as well. That's always something that you look for in games. Uh, there will be glass and electronic sorts of uh, piles that you can't get through until you unlock the necessary upgrades. So there's uh, like an incentive to just keep exploring and finding new things so that you can get those upgrades so that you can access new areas. It's not a bad formula. It's not a bad looking game or an experiential game. It does, however, feel a little tedious. And the reason I say that is because when you get to a new area, you're basically looking at just piles and piles of this trash and refuse, and the majority of what you're going to be doing there is trying to drill down those hills so that you can collect the trash and resources that it provides so that you can build upgrades. And you'll end up spending an inordinate amount of time just breaking those piles down. Then you'll come across animals and people, and there'll be quests and stuff, and you have to find out what the animals want to eat so that they'll come back to your ranch. You have to collect a bunch of stuff for several of the NPCs so that you can expand your house out, so that you can get the new upgrades, so that you can clean the water supplies, repair railroads, etc., etc., etc. And 
this all pretty much breaks down to the, I got to collect a lot of trash. <laughs> I've just got to break down mounds and mounds and mounds of trash that you have to deal with in every single area that you come across. It is sort of mindless in that regard. It is the kind of game that you're best off playing when you're just like chilling out, maybe watching some videos on YouTube or something, and you can have it playing in the background because it doesn't take a lot of brain power to run through the game. And it has a lot of things that just seem unnecessary. Like you'll collect all of these hats throughout the game, specifically hats, because you can't really change Ellen's clothing, but you can put hats on all of your animals. I put a mushroom hat on a cow. It serves no purpose. There's no reason to put a hat on a cow. There's no other clothing options. It's, it's just putting hats on animals. Even with the backpack expansions too, which are considerably larger than a lot of farming sims, the stack sizes for like your crops are like 10. So it's very easy to completely max out your inventory and have to start putting down a ton of chests in order to sort through them. Although there aren't really options to specifically label or color code those chests like you might see in other games. So the organizational part gets a little bit tedious as well. And I hate to say the word tedious continuously, but let's face it, I'm drilling trash and then I'm using my vacuum to suck it all up and then uh, spurting water on things too with my same assembly so that I can suck up more water so that I can utilize it again um, while doing a lot of fetch quests and finding uh, resources that people want. It is sort of tedious in that regard. Now that doesn't mean that it's bad because it does seem to understand its genre. It's not supposed to be really challenging. That's not the goal of a, a farming or life sim. It's supposed to feel like comfort food. And no place like home does succeed in that regard. But it just still feels very rough around the edges. There were even some times where I, I literally glitched into areas or were able to access areas that you could tell I was not supposed to access just because I moved in a certain place to get there. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm underneath the hidden floor, haven't found the button to actually release it, but I'm underneath it now. Congratulations, you can get to the underground area. Nothing real game-breaking because you still have fast travel from anywhere, so you can always get out of the situation, but it does feel like there were some serious bugs and glitches in the game that have not been addressed, and considering that it came out like a year ago, I don't know if they are going to be. It's not the greatest life sim, but it's also not bad. Like, it understood the assignment of what it's trying to do. It just feels like it's rough around the edges. You know, conceptually, I like the idea of having somebody who's been on Mars after humanity just, like, abandoned the planet, comes on back to Earth, finds the place absolutely trashed, and has to try and restore it to its former glory. It's a, a post-apocalyptic farm sim, basically. And really cool concept, very cool idea kind of middle of the road in terms of the genre itself. So it's at this point that I would tell you about other games that are similar, but might be better. And I would usually say something about Stardew Valley here, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that on this one. I'm going to try something very different. Uh, we're going to just say Coral Island, which is still being supported and is uh, out for everybody. I was an early backer of it, so I might have a little bit of preferential treatment, but it runs a lot closer to something like Stardew Valley itself, and it does look good, and there's a lot of people to interact with, and will remind you very, very deeply of a Stardew Valley, although with a completely different graphical style and an expansion of a lot of ideas, especially the underwater stuff and the island atmosphere. Very cool. You can try that one if this doesn't look like it's going to scratch that itch for you. All right. I still have to find those ruby slippers because I don't like being here. 
And I think that's the only way that I can personally get out of this mine. Like, you have the mine cart so that you can go back up to the surface world. But many people do not know, I am not allowed to use the mine cart. It was cursed a very long time ago so that I may not step foot on it. I am trapped here for all eternity. The lore keeps growing, doesn't it, folks? Ruby slippers. Do you have them? Oh, Oh, you're just taking them up with you. Well, that kind of ruins my plans. That was the point, wasn't it? Why do you keep coming here? 